What's up guys, Kyle Ford here. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about the 321 backup system and how the Narbox 2.0 fits right in. So the 321 backup system I've kind of talked about before. I always said that your data doesn't exist if it doesn't exist in three places. So that means that your data is in three places, ideally on two different types of medium, and also one of them needs to be offsite. I will say that having two of the copies locally is ideal because if something happens to your working drive right now, you could easily fire up your backup and get right back to work. You're not gonna miss any time. So firstly, if your camera's got two camera slots, I hope you're using them. That's your first line of defense against losing data. So I personally shoot medium raw to my backup card just to save space and that's gonna be plenty of size if something happens. Uh, you can also shoot JPEG or full copies. It just sometimes your camera can't keep up if you're shooting really quickly. So once you're finished shooting, it's time to download. When I'm traveling, I take no chances with my client data. That goes for when I'm locally too, but it's a little easier to stay with the 321 backup system when I'm home. So I'm specifically gonna talk about the 321 system while I'm traveling and how the Narbox 2.0 fits into that scheme. So I should add before getting into specifics of the system that when I'm downloading my cards, I download each card to each of my backup destinations separately. So this way you're not copying the corrupted file from the first download and propagating that to your other backups. It may take a little more time, but it's definitely saved my ass in the past. So once I'm back at the hotel and I'm ready to start downloading my photos, I fire up Photo Mechanic and I download them to a drive like this. Like this is a SanDisk and a Samsung solid state drive. They're super portable, really great for travel. So what I really like about Photo Mechanic is that it will automatically detect duplicates if I've already downloaded those images somewhere. Uh, Lightroom also has this functionality, but I prefer Photo Mechanic. It's a little faster for me and I can quickly browse through my RAWs without having to wait for Lightroom to build previews. So now once I've got all the photos downloaded once to this drive, I slam the card into the Narbox. So the Narbox has a built-in SD reader here in the bottom. It also has a USB-C port so you can plug it in a card reader if uh, you've got CF cards or something you prefer just to use a card reader. So once the card's recognized by the Narbox, I run the preset that I've designed for this assignment and away we go. So what I really like about the Narbox 2.0 is that it's got a rubberized housing around the SSD and the computer components inside. It's also got interchangeable batteries, which is super nice because you can charge up a bunch and if you run out of battery, you can just, instead of charging the unit, you can just slam a new battery in here and keep going. It is weather resistant. It's like the rubber housing and this has all got really nice seals so no water's gonna get in there. I used this both in Iceland and in Cabo while I was on assignment and it worked fantastically. Even just getting out of the rain into the car and putting the card in here to back up automatically does everything I needed it to do. So one feature that I particularly like about the Narbox is it has a checksum feature. You have to enable it, but when you do, it takes a little longer to complete the backups. It verifies your photos and videos were copied successfully so you don't run into any weird file corruption issues later on. So one super nice thing about the Narbox as well is that it integrates directly into my backup system I've already got set up at home. Meaning I can just plug this into my Synology NAS and it's ready to go. So to do this, you just connect the Narbox to your network, sign in to my Synology box, and it's gonna show up just like any other drive. Mine is super handy, it's got a USB port in the front and I just plug the USB from the Narbox into the Synology and it shows right up. I can copy the folders over directly and it's ready to be backed up again on my offsite drive. So some software that I really like for Mac to get backups going is Carbon Copy Cloner and Chronosync. These two both have really easy interfaces, the software is really stable, and I've never had any issues. So for PC, I've had a little bit harder of a time finding something that works really well for me. I found that GoodSync works pretty well, it doesn't have as nice of an interface as the other two, but it works and it gets the job done. So these work in several different ways. You can set them up to sync, so basically these two drives can be your backups your primary drive and your backup drive, and it will just sync them together so that whatever happens over here is copied over here. You can make it so the deletions that are made here are backed up over here for a certain amount of time or until the drive gets full, or you can just have them sync and make sure you don't delete the wrong thing. I know that's living on the edge a little bit, but sometimes you just have so much data that you can't save your deletions all the time. So once I get everything backed up to my Synology NAS that's sitting here in my office, I've talked about that before. Um, I have a couple of these type of shucked easy store drives. They're just bare hard drives. You can pull them out of an easy store you get at Best Buy or you can just buy bare drives like this. Um, I have a dock for this and then some cases that they go in, but I have a couple of those I rotate at my office and I use the internal Synology backup suite 
to back up to that. It's a, like a compressed style backup and I keep those. There's two, I keep one at work all the time offsite. That way if something happens at my house, then I'm backed up. That's my offsite backup. Now, I didn't talk about any cloud backups and that's because I don't have a fiber ISP here, which is a super bummer because I'd like to use something like Backblaze, but I just have so much data with the photo and video work that I do that it's just really not possible. So without having a fiber ISP, it can't really keep up with all my data pushing up to the cloud and it never actually is backed up stuff that I needed backed up right away. Also being that most cable ISPs have a data cap, when I'm pushing all that data up, we go over our data limit and then they yell at us, tell us they're gonna find us a bunch of money, which is really unfortunate. So I didn't really go over cloud backups. If it works for you or you have fiber, that's awesome. I would love to integrate that into my workflow at some point, but for me, it just doesn't work right now. So just to review, three, two, one, my working drive, my RAID system, which is my local backup, and my offsite drive. So three copies at all times, two of them locally, different mediums, one off site. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. And if you're interested in any of the things I showed off today, I'll throw a link in the description for all of those products.